Enphase stock is up close to 5% after reporting their latest quarterly figures, and you might actually be surprised because, well, a double miss. Miss on revenue estimates, <laughs> or missed on EPS, and guidance was actually below consensus numbers as well. So why is this stock up 5%, right? It's quite strange. Well, let's discuss that in this video. Right now, it's a company with a market cap close to $15 billion, with a forward PE close to 31 times. Compared to its five-year mean, we are much lower. Forward PE, EV to EBITDA, price to sales, price to free cash flow, price earnings to growth is a bit higher than previously at 2.34. But with Enphase being backwards looking doesn't really make that much sense because this is a company where it does thrive in a low interest rate environment, or at least not in high interest rates environment. And as the market anticipates lower rates, rate cuts, then it would probably put a higher multiple on a company like that. On the flip side, because we are in a high interest rate environment, revenue, uh, profitability last quarter as well, all got hit quite badly. So the stock itself, year over year, stock is down 41.6%. Now, overall, overall, in the last five years, if you've been in Enphase for a long time, for the last five years, stock is still up 387%. But of course, if we go into a, let's say, shorter time frame, three years, you're down 42%, year over year, you're down 41%, and year to date, stock is still down around 20%. Now, as you can clearly see here, analyst estimates for fiscal year 2024, sales growth down 36.6%, EPS about the same, but then fiscal year 25 and 26, they expect to see a reacceleration top and bottom line. So maybe right now, maybe this is the bottom and the way forward is up and to the right. Now let's jump into the earnings report. If you enjoyed this type of videos, leave it a thumbs up, subscribe. If you have not, we're going to go over a lot of earnings reports this earnings season. So make sure you are subscribed to the channel closing in on 50,000 subscribers. So thank you very much for all the support. If you want to support me even further, do check out the link down in the description and in the pinned comments with the top 10 best stocks to buy now or go to full.com forward slash couch investor. Thank you very much. All right, so if we're looking at revenue for the quarter that came in at $303.5 million, gross margin 45.2%. So quarter over quarter, we are already doing much better. But if we look year over year comparisons on, on a gap basis, Year over year, I mean, same quarter last year, revenue was $711 million. If we look at operating income, which is right here, this line right here, this quarter, unlike last quarter, last quarter, that was a loss, a rare loss for Enphase on a gap basis. This quarter, $1.79 million. But here again, year over year, huge, huge difference because same quarter last year, that was $170.3 million in operating income. Net income loss, which is just below it, again, better than last quarter, but still far, far away from where we were last year and two years ago. Now, the good thing here is, and this is something we mentioned last quarter as well, is that this is a company that still generates free cash flow. For this quarter, free cash flow was $117.4 million. So they're ending cash, cash equivalent, and marketable securities of $1.65 billion. So in my opinion, quite a healthy company. They say here, with regards to revenue in Europe for the second quarter, that remained flat when compared to the first quarter of 2024. They say that the global channel inventory returned to normal levels as they exited second quarter of 2024. That's definitely a positive going forward. With regards to revenue in the United States for the second quarter, that increased approximately 32% compared to the first quarter of 2024. So now you're already starting to understand why this stock is up despite the double miss. During Q2, they also repurchased close to 900,000 shares of their common stock at an average price of $112 for a total of approximately $100 million. They also spent approximately $7.5 million by withholding shares to cover taxes for employee stock vesting and options in the second quarter that reduced the diluted shares by 66,126 shares. In the quarter, they shipped 120.2 megawatt hours of IQ batteries compared to 75.5 megawatt hours in the first quarter of 2024. 
We saw higher battery attach rates in California in the second quarter of 2024, driven by the increasing adoption of NEM 3.0. They're now shipping their third generation of IQ batteries, the IQ Battery 5P, to the United States, Mexico, Canada, Puerto Rico, Australia, the United Kingdom, Italy, France, the Netherlands, and Luxembourg. More than 7,400 installers worldwide are certified to install their IQ batteries compared to more than 4,900 installers in the first quarter of 2024. They're definitely preparing probably for a much improved market and sentiment worldwide towards energy and solar. As for the third quarter financial outlook, they expect revenue to be between 370 and 410 million dollars, which again is a small improvement quarter over quarter, but probably quite far away from where the company was a year ago. Gross margin to be between the range of 45 to 48 percent with net IRA benefit, non-GAAP gross margin to be between a range of 47 to 50 percent with net IRA benefit and 39 to 42 percent excluding net IRA benefits. With regards to the revenue guidance yeah, between 370 and 410, the consensus number was closer to 408. Maybe they can beat it a little bit, that remains to be seen, but overall this is definitely okay, not the best of the best quarters out there for Enphase, but definitely you can see sentiment shift. We can hear, well, we can read it here that sentiment is shifting, channel, global channel inventory is becoming better as well. The company, although it was struggling and maybe still is struggling a little bit, margins wise, still quite okay, free cash flow wise, quite okay as well. Now it's just a macro thing. Macro has to shift much more in their favor. Maybe that will happen towards the back half of this year, especially going into 2025. Things could look much better for a company like Enphase. And so right now, if we're looking at Enphase stock, it sits at $108 or so. The 200-day moving average sits at 122 the 50-day one at 112 and the 20-day one at 109 So maybe tomorrow when the market opens, it could be making its way above the 20-day moving average. And then maybe if there is some positive momentum in the overall market, make our way to the 50-day one. Right now, RSI is still pretty neutral. Overall, this doesn't mean that you have to go all in into end phase right now, although the stock might have bottomed, but you still want to see more progress, I would say, in the next quarter or two. Now, I know some people would say, yeah, but why not just dollar cost average and not time the market? Yeah, that's also a good option. I'm just saying that just because right now the stock is up after hours because the market sends that things are getting better does not mean that this is suddenly a glaring buying opportunity. No, might be a one-off or might truly be a bottom. That's why positioning, position sizing is quite important. So yes, if you don't want to time the market, dip your toes, buy a handful of shares right now, wait three months until we get more information. If it's good information, you can buy some more shares and so on and so forth. The company still has a long, long way to go to reach the highs of last year and two years ago. That doesn't mean that the stock will go back up extremely fast and reach those, well, highs that we've reached, why was it, back in 2022 or so, above $300 or so. That would be quite something. But then again, very, very high multiple here. Company was way more profitable, generating way more revenue. That might happen in the future, but don't expect it to happen so quickly either. So that's about it for this video overall. Mac quarter sentiment is changing a little bit and that's why you're seeing a positive reaction with the stock price. That's about it. Do share your thoughts and comments down in the comment section below. If you enjoy this type of videos, leave it a thumbs up, subscribe if not, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.